Now, this may seem like a very strange question, especially for those who don't believe in speaking in tongues today, but there, there are some who are troubled by this, and it's taught in some churches that if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved. So let me categorically say that is not scriptural. I believe in speaking in tongues. I've been speaking in tongues since January 24th of 1972, and I categorically say it is not scriptural to teach that unless you speak in tongues, you're not saved. There's not a hint in Scripture that would point in that direction. And although the Holy Spirit being poured out on the Gentile believers in Acts 10 and them speaking in tongues was a sign to the Jews that, yes, God was giving his Spirit to the Gentiles as well. In Acts the 8th chapter, the Samaritans believed in Jesus. They put their trust in Jesus, and yet the Holy Spirit had not come upon them. There was no visible outpouring that they had experienced until the apostles came and laid hands on them. So clearly, they were believers. They had put their trust in Jesus first, and yet had not had that next experience in the Spirit, which well could have been accompanied by speaking in tongues, because Simon sees something happens, and and he now wants to get that same power in his own carnal way. We know through the book of Acts, we're called on to turn to the Lord in repentance and faith, and he'll save us and forgive us. We know in Romans 10 that if we confess Jesus as Lord and believe that God has raised him from the dead, we'll be saved. Nothing about a need to speak in tongues or confirmation of tongues. You might say, yeah, 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 but Romans 8 says if, if you don't have the Spirit, I mean, look at what's written in Romans, the eighth chapter, that that if you do not have the spirit of Christ or the Ruach of the Messiah, that then God does not live in you and you do not belong to God. So wouldn't that be manifest by speaking in tongues? What Paul's talking about there is the witness of the spirit and the indwelling of the spirit. The moment you are born again. The moment you come to know the Lord, the Holy Spirit comes to live within you. We enjoy the communion of the Spirit that Paul speaks of in 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The Holy Spirit bears witness with us, as Paul writes in Romans 8, 16, that we are the children of God. The Holy Spirit leads us and guides us, as he says in, in Romans the 8th chapter, the 14th verse. Uh, and we are, we are led to be conformed to the character of Jesus and to say no to the flesh. The moment we're saved, we become temples of the Holy Spirit, as Paul affirms in 1 Corinthians 6, that the Holy Spirit dwells in us, that is separate from an endowment of power or a supernatural gifting that would include speaking in tongues. And notice in 1 Corinthians 14, Paul says, don't forbid speaking in tongues. It means in the public assembly and things like that. But he certainly doesn't say it's a sign of salvation. And in 1 Corinthians 12, he says, do we all speak in tongues? The answer is no. No matter how you, you slice that, that pie there and, and understand that, uh, if he wanted to say that you can't be saved without speaking in tongues, that would be a strange thing to put there in the New Testament, even if you say it's only referring to a special gift of tongues. So do you need to speak in tongues to be saved? Absolutely, categorically no. Uh, to me, it's a wonderful gift to have in my own life. It enhances my prayer life and deepens my communion with God. And I do believe it is a a means of growing in God's power uh, to be used to serve the world more effectively and glorify Jesus. But you need to speak in tongues to be saved. Absolutely not. Don't ever let anybody put you in that kind of bondage.